What's up guys, it's Coach Mills here, and today we're going to be breaking down the new patch support tier list. So we're seeing a lot of changes to tanks and DPS, and even supports, and it's going to change what characters are best in the meta, so we're going to break it all down and talk about it. But before we do, I want to make it clear that this is not just based on high level or pro play. I'm trying to take a lot of the information from all ranks and characters that are really good at solo queue or climbing you through some of the lower ranks are going to be pushed up this list. So it's going to be a lot different than many of the other tier lists you see, but it's going to be trying to be the most helpful. Now, if you enjoyed this content, please smash that like, subscribe, and go check out our Patreon in the links below for private coaching. If you want to improve, let's get into it. Now the new patch is changing a lot of the tanks that are seeing play and there is one support that is getting nerfs kiriko but we will get to that when we get to kiriko in just a moment now first off let's talk about baptiste baptiste is one of the hardest carry supports in the lower ranks and even in the higher ranks baptiste is phenomenal he doesn't get enough credit for what he can do he's incredibly good at making plays doing damage saving his team and uh yeah that mobility makes him a hard dive target as well and especially against characters like reaper that are going to see more play characters like tracer that are going to want to hunt you down being able to just yeet to the high ground is just really really great and uh and yeah baptiste is going to be strong at the highest ranks though he is pretty susceptible to getting dove um if a dive comes from multiple characters all at once they can just dive him he can't really get away and then they just burst down his immortality but for the majority of ranks i think that baptiste is a crazy hard carry he's definitely a character worth playing and maining and uh he can have a ton of impact so i'm putting him in the a tier next off let's talk about kiriko kiriko is one of the characters that is getting the nerf um she is getting her swift step and vulnerability duration reduced from 0.4 to 0.25 seconds now this is going to be like it, it it matters but it really doesn't take away from how strong kiriko is kiriko is a support unlike we've never seen i mean she is uh just so damn powerful she can get picks she can frag oftentimes if you're not climbing or carrying on kiriko it's because you're not making as much plays like a kiriko can take an alternate angle from her team fish for damage get kills and then she can't die like you can't punish a kiriko a good kiriko is almost impossible to punish she can teleport away and then she can also save her team cleanse protect her team and you know flower is just such a powerful ability kiriko has some crazy carry potential but the reality of the character is she's not the easiest to play like you need to be very good mechanically good to hit her shots but even not hitting your shots consistently you can still get a lot of value on her but if you unlock that dual like the dual heavy damage heavy side of kiriko that's when you're going to get some crazy hard carry games i am going to put her in the s tier doesn't mean she's going to be in the s tier for everyone like on every rank but i think that she's a character that not only will improve you mechanically improve you fundamentally but as you improve you're going to win more games so yeah kiriko putting her in the s tier she's just incredible and yeah it, it's it's clear even post nerfs honestly you could nerf her way more and she would still be insane now next up we got to talk about mora more is a little bit tricky because mora is really really good if you're in the low ranks and she starts to become less and less effective as players can punish a mora better now can you still succeed with more at the higher ranks absolutely yes you can absolutely still succeed but it's a lot harder and especially um when so many supports provide so much great utility and mora doesn't provide nearly as much i would say that she's a character that kind of starts to fall off once you hit masters i think that she's still fine and she's still good and especially in low ranks you can do it all right you can heal your team a ton you can get picks you can duel you can have crazy stats and you can completely deadlift games on this character in a way that you can't do with anyone else but, uh, but I don't think that she's a character that you should purely one-trick. I think that on top of that, there are other characters that uh, take more mechanical skill than Mora. that if you only play Mora, you're not setting yourself up for success. Um, I, I know I'm saying her name wrong. I know I'm going to get someone to talk about it in the comments. I, I, uh, I, I don't even know. I, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm putting her in the B tier. Um, next up, we got to talk about Mercy. 
Mercy is an interesting character because Mercy is actually insane in the right hands. There are some Mercies that know all the movement techs. I'm sure you've seen them on Twitter. They're just ridiculous where they're able to completely control this character like never before. And uh, it's it's ridiculous. It's 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 insane. And I think that Mercy actually is a character that is pretty good at pocketing some DPS and especially for ranked, you can get a lot of value that way. Although as dive becomes more prevalent, especially when you get more coordination in higher ranks, Mercy becomes a target that can be really punished and it's kind of up to you to have that movement mastered so that you're not an easy target still though i think that mercy is fantastic if you combine the average ranks and you talk about her impact i think that she's fantastic and there's a lot of room to get better at her so uh i'm gonna put her in the b tier as well i'm actually gonna put her a little bit above more um yeah next up we got to talk about zenyatta and zenyatta is an interesting support because he is like a glass cannon, right? He is uh, as lethal as he is fragile. <laughs> you can kill people very easily, but you can also die very easily. And I think that, especially when Winston's going to see a lot of play, and characters like Tracer are going to see more play, um, you are going to be constantly under threat. But the plus side is now Sombra's a little bit weaker, so at least you don't have to play against that, which was like your worst matchup. Very, very annoying matchup. But still um zens need expert positioning and great mechanical skill you need to have both in order to have impact but when you have those you can have crazy high impact you can dual dps you can just add so much to the breakpoints, allow your team to actually punish tanks and your ultimate's still fantastic so there's a lot about this character that can be good but um especially if you're in a situation where you have no peel I think that uh, it's going to be pretty hard to play Zen, but he does have that carry potential X factor if you're good enough with him. I'm putting him in, uh, let's say, I'll put him at the B tier. Somewhere somewhere around there. I'm not entirely sure exactly where she, he should go in the B tier. Next up, let's talk about Brig. And unfortunately, or fortunately, <laughs> I'm going to say fortunately because I, uh, I, uh, I hate Brig. And I say this as someone who played a ton of Brig in Overwatch 1 because back when I scrimmed in GOATS, all the projectile DPS players, the Hanzo, the Farah, and the Genji players were put on Brig. So I played a ton of Brig in Goats, in Scrims, and yeah, um, and me. <laughs> but uh, but all joking aside, Brig, unfortunately, is a character that is like trying to be good against Dive. But she oftentimes, especially in like what is like the quote-unquote meta now, she becomes the Dive target. So let's, let's look at like a traditional meta Dive, which is like a Winston, Reaper... Lucio Kiriko dive, right? The reason that this composition is so strong is because no one can be the dive target. There's no one that gets dove in that situation. No one can actually capitalize on any support to dive because all the supports have mobility. Brig has no mobility. Brig can get dove. Brig can die. So if you're playing Brig as a bodyguard, like you have an Ana that you're protecting or a Bath that you're protecting, and y'all are sticking together, sure. But you can't really play Brig with some of these other characters that can leave, like a Kiriko or a Lucio, because you're going to be in a situation where you are now the one that gets dove, and Brig is not as strong as she used to be. She could just get dove and punished. Doesn't mean that she can't get value depending on the composition, but I do think that far and away she's the weakest support to play, and I'm actually putting her in the C tier. Still not unplayable and still could get value, but you need to make sure that when you are picking Brig, there's someone in your composition that you are protecting as a bodyguard. That is your job as Brig, is to bodyguard someone. So if you have a Cass, you know, someone that is already going to get dove in your comp, like a, like a Cassidy, like an Ana, like a Hanzo, and then you just play with those players and you bodyguard them and you protect them. That is what your goal is on Brig. If there's no one in your composition that is worth protecting, then there's no point in you playing Brig because now you're the dive target and you're going to die. <laughs> so yeah. Next up, we got to talk about Lucio. And uh, if this wasn't clear already, Lucio is all the way up in that S tier. Lucio is freaking cracked. He's insane. And um, in ranked, you, of course, get to make plays. You get to peel. There's a ton of flexibility. In addition, you're very hard to punish and dive. You can have a ton of impact on this character. That has always been the case. And right now, the meta lines up really, really well with Lucio. I think that the trick here is to, you know, find that happy medium between going in with your team to make plays peeling for your teammates that need it and uh and yeah i think that lucio is an incredible support pick 
and definitely someone worth grinding and playing although many lucio mains basically play lucio no matter what whether he's better or not so yeah uh but yeah no he's definitely very very good at all ranks actually i would say that lucio is probably the best support generally um while kiriko is the best support as you get towards the higher ranks still playable at the lower ranks but lucio is far has a far more even um impact curve as opposed to kiriko that has a far more exponential impact curve as you get to the highest ranks next up let's talk about anna and uh i'm gonna put Anna in the a tier even though i kind of want to put her in the l tier <laughs> um but uh but no Anna's Anna's fine Anna's can make a lot of plays she can get impactful sleeps she can get impactful nades it is unfortunate though that uh kiriko is a character that exists that actually just hard counters anna she could duel anna she can prevent her value she can wake up her targets and uh and yeah i was like hey i'm gonna grind my support i uh my support is like rocking in masters right now and i was like hey i'll grind my support a little bit i used to be a gm on main let's just play anna and uh i played one game in particular where i slept a nanoblade and genji and a kiriko teleports onto us and wakes him up and he kills me and i'm like i want on install <laughs> but uh but yeah no it was uh it was definitely like yeah i don't want to play support anymore <laughs> I'm, I'm going back to dvs i'm going back to tank forget climbing my support so uh so yeah that was uh that was an interesting experience but honestly Anna can definitely get a lot of value you just have to play like very very well you have to get value out of both your nade and your sleep you have to overload that kiriko's resources you have to be very particular about when you actually try to make these plays depending on when your opposition has cooldowns and uh and i do think that anna can also just frag really well in the lower ranks she's a great character that can just make plays herself get pickoffs there's a lot about anna that is really good i have to put her up in the a tier but i will say against true meta against hard meta like winston and sojourn and kiriko and lucio anna is an absolute dog and you're not going to get much value out of her so yeah i think she falls off a bit as you climb but generally she is very good now definitely let me know which parts of these you agree or disagree with and let me know what your favorite support player or support hero is and why let me know down below and uh, if you're interested in private coaching definitely check out the patreon in the description smash that subscribe and i'll see you next time